We are on to the second project called the Photographic Retouch Project. I'm going to bring up right now the first day handout. And in the first day handout slash um, syllabus, you will see that if I go up here, that the second project after the web buttons is the photo repair project worth six points. I'm going to go down to the calendar and you will see that the photographic retouch project right here is for week two. It is due or turned to be turned in um, by Sunday, okay? In either into the Dropbox account or you can submit it to me at sorioB at macomb.edu or you can do it online. But let's minimize this. You can do it through um, the upload through um, Canvas. So I'm going to minimize the screen and show you the photographic retouch project. Now, how do you get to the photographic retouch project? How do you get this file? Well, we're going to go over to the Canvas portal real fast here, and we're going to go down in where you would go to Web Advisor and click on Canvas. In Canvas, I'm going to go to my 1320 class, either one of them, I teach two of them, and we're going to go to the modules. And then I'm going to go down to the Photo Retouch Project. And right here it says, and I'll even make this a little bit smaller on the screen, it says that you can click on the um, photographic retouching asset file. And if you will see that it'll come to this window, right here it says click here to download the face JPEG. So I will, I'll click here. And what I would like to tell you is, yes, we are gonna work on this one. Now on my computer, it defaults to open in preview, but I'm gonna right hand click on the file. Did you hear that? And I'm gonna open it in Photoshop. So what I would do is right hand click on this file right here, open with Photoshop, but I already have it open, so I'm not going to do that. But you would store this in your 1320 folder. Now I'm going to bring another browser over to my screen, and I'm going to tell you that for a second project, if you want to, you could go get items like this. I have two files that I'm going to um, click. I'm going to click one of them and just hit the space bar on a Mac, and it'll open up the file. That is a um, picture. If I um, tell you that picture was um, a large image size, okay? It was at least 3,000 pixels wide, which is what we need kind of. And what I should do is open that picture in Photoshop to, to show you the image size. So I will. I'll open with Photoshop. And as soon as that one opens in Photoshop, I'll zoom in so you can see it's got really good detail. See? Now if you go to image size, you can get a file that is at least two to three thousand pixels in height and two to three thousand pixels in width. The better, the higher the number, the better it is. Now, how do you do that in your web browser? Now, I'm going to close that one. Let's minimize Photoshop and then let's open the other one that I had. And why am I showing you these? Because these are extra credit assignments. It would be great to have two of them, and you're welcome to find anything you want. But look at this lady's face. I mean, obviously, it's a wonderful face. It's really a, got a lot of character in it. But there's quite a few things to fix on there. Let's not go into them at the moment. But let me hit the F key so I can put this back at full screen without menu bars, and I can close her image and minimize the face we're going to work on. But what I did was I searched, and be very, very careful when you search online. You know that you can get into problems, right? Well, what I wanted to do was show you that on one of my search engines, I searched Google Portraits. Then on another search engine, I, sh I searched detailed face portraits. And I got a lot of these really beautiful photographs. But what I wanted to do was to narrow my search. So I said, let's go to search tools and let's search. Um, make sure it doesn't have a copyright infringement. So let's go labeled for reuse. Okay, did you hear that? See that? It's labeled for reuse. And I went over to the image size and I made sure that the image size was not just large, but larger than, and I got to choose, and I chose six megabytes, which was at least 2,800 pixels by 2,000 pixels. You can even go higher if you want. The higher you go, the narrow you search, and the better images you will you know, garner out of that. But let's go to just finding another image here. And again, may try to make it in color. And I'm not going to go do a long search thing here. But if I wanted to find one of these images, and if I wanted to retouch this image, this image that I'm clicking on right now, 
That's a great image. It's 4,000 pixels by 2,000 pixels. Now you would view the image like I'm doing here and it would download right to your desktop. Do you see how this image where I'm circling right there, where I'm clicking, how that's downloading to my desktop? That's a great image to retouch. Okay, it's got facial imperfections, it's got hairs coming out of his nose and it's got different things on his lips and maybe the client might want that to be just a little cleaned up or let's go to the other one. Remember, this is for your second search. This one is 3,000 pixels by 3,000 pixels. It's somewhere in there, okay? It can even be 4,000 pixels wide. But if I wanted to view that image, I just click the image. Now, if it comes up to your screen like this, right-hand click and save the image to wherever you want. In this case, I'd saved it to my desktop. And I'll save it and put this browser on the other screen. And now you can see over here how I have the two images being saved on my computer. And the first one is taking a while to download. So I'll just let it do its thing. I don't really care. But on this one, I would simply right hand click and open with Photoshop. And then if this were my second piece, I could get right into it and start retouching. Now, perhaps he's just a little too wrinkled for us. Okay. And I kind of like his character, but maybe his eyes could be whitened up. Maybe some of the shine on his face could be lowered. The greasy look, a little bit of his imperfections could be fixed. But show me what you you can do with this okay now let's start with this image again I went to canvas and I downloaded this image now I've already opened this up in a file and I wanted to show you that this is the fixed face let me click to the top layer which I copied from the bottom layer see the bottom layer here I'm gonna copy it to the top layer I'll show you how because we're gonna start over on this but this is what his image was like look at how I took his wrinkles, let's just click the wrinkles away. I'm going to take the wrinkles and click them away. Um, somewhere on this machine, let me see if I have it, I actually put in, I don't know if I closed that window or not, but I wanted to go show you if I can really fast where I store all my stuff. Should have had this open, I did, but silly me, I closed it. So let's go to Angel. Let's go to Canvas. Let's go to 1320, which is your class. And I wanted to show you that in that folder that I had the photo retouch in, I had a to-do list in there. And I just wanted to bring it up. So what we are trying to do is reduce the wrinkles. Um, I'm going to make this bigger. Um, and that was supposed to say nose. Here, I'll type in an N and hit Command S to say, but I'm going to marquee that and hit Command T. And I'll make it really large on screen so we can see this and I'll move it out. So maybe that was too big, but that's okay. I'll move it over now. Okay. So what I wanted to do with him, and let me put this on the screen here. Okay. What I wanted to do with him was to reduce his wrinkles on his face, was to remove some of the wrinkles, was to whiten his teeth, darken the background slightly, clean his face up and make it look nice. Okay. And then clean the pores and the hairs on his nose. Oh, that's where the nose came in. Needed to go to that line right. Let me make sure I can put it on that line, right? You know what? It's not going over to that line because my document is not wide enough. Okay, this is silly. <laughs> okay, no, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm not getting it to go over to there because I think my thing is too big. Uh, this is really silly, but I'm going to do it anyway because I am stubborn. So let me go to 24 points, and now that's why, because I had a big block in there. Okay, fine. I, I'm very stubborn, have you noticed yet? So that's clean the pores and hairs on his nose. So let me go in and say it again. Reduce wrinkles, remove wrinkles, whiten teeth, darken the background slightly, clean the face, and clean the pores and hairs on his nose. Okay, that's like a list a client would give you. Okay, so let's look at him. He's got pores on his nose that are filled with blackheads. He's got lips. It looks like he has a cold sore here. Very deep wrinkles around his eye. He has shine on his face that needs to go away. And do you notice how I'm trying to move the face down and it wasn't moving? I have to hit the F key, and I did, actually, in the meantime. And now I can actually move the face around the screen because I'm showing it with no menu bars, okay? Um, with um, I cascaded the image. As you can see, I'll hit the F key once again and once again. And now, if I try to move him around the screen, whoops, if I try to move him around the screen, he's not going to move around the screen. See, I'm trying. I'm holding the space bar down. But let me now hit the F key once 
and see how I can move him around the screen nicely. Why is that important? Because I can zero in in a second by option, middle mouse buttoning, and rolling the middle mouse button to where I want. Now, let me turn this on and off. So this is what I did to his face. Look at how nicely I cleaned up his face, took some of the grease off. It was really easy to do. I took away some of the shine. Look at all the blackheads on his nose. They're all gone. All the spots are gone one at a time. I took his mouth and I not only made him have white teeth, I took the yellow away, but I took away the cold sores and the spots on his lips, okay? I even got close to the nose, and you can see here how he has little thingies hanging out of his nose. And, you know, nobody's perfect, okay? And he has little spitty things hanging from his teeth. Well, I took those away, and I made them look real nice, and I cleaned up his lips. Those are just things that, that the client would want. Look at how he's really orange underneath the chin here, and I took that away. Now, what I want to do is to start over on this. We only use two tools, okay? So, how do I... I'm going to show you a little trick, and I know this is only your second lesson, but I'm going to click to the background layer. You see what I'm doing? And I'm going to right hand click and duplicate that layer to not the same file, but I'm going to go to a new file. And then I'm going to immediately, see how there's no layers there? I'm immediately going to save as, so Command Shift S or Control Shift S, and I'm going to click on the face and I'm going to say this is face number two. So my first one was face number one. This one's going to be face number two, and it's a Photoshop file. What a Photoshop file means is it's going to have layers. Okay, so I'm going to click a few layers in here. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to do and start on fixing the nose area. Okay, so I just want to show you some cool things. So let's zoom in on the nose. Let's call the bottom layer nose. Now what I wanted to show you first because we're going to get into a lot of terms of black and white. So before I go working on the nose, I just wanted to show you something neat. I'm going to duplicate his layer because I want to move his layer up to the top. And I'm going to call it, hope I don't spell it wrong, original. Now, in spelling, in um, having it be the original, I can turn it off and on. As you will see, it's on the top, so it takes precedence in the stacking order. And I'm going to... Um, use it as my reference to what look what it was looking like Which is the top layer and then all my improvements here Okay, and you can see all the five layers where my improvements are and I'll probably have more layers than five um, So what I want to say is I'm going to add something called a layer mask Do you see this button that I'm clicking which is the um, fifth button from the uh, right or the third button from the left It's called a layer mask button now. What does a layer mask do? I'm going to turn off the bottom layer so you can see that when I turn him off, you see the checkerboard transparent background, okay? I'm going to hit the B key standing for paintbrush, and I'm going to take the flow of the paintbrush, which we're going to do most of our lesson here at 5. You see the top here? I'm taking it from 5 to 100, and I'm going to paint black on the layer mask. So. I'm in black. You can see the foreground color is black. You see what I'm pointing to? It's called the foreground color. When I want to fill with the foreground color, that's Option or Alt Delete. If I want to fill with the background color, that's Command or Control Delete. Okay, but I'm not going to fill with either one of those right now. I'm just going to paint at 100%. Now, do you see how I'm cutting a hole right in his face? Well, I didn't actually cut a hole in his face. Look if I go over here and show you the layer mask. If I option click on the layer mask, right on it, you can see that that is the black paint that's on top of the layer mask, and the layer mask is attached to the image. Black removes the pixels that is on the image to its left. So let me option or alt click back on the layer mask. If I paint black on the layer mask, it removes or eliminates pixels. If I hit the X key and now white is the foreground color and if I paint white over the black I'll do it two ways. Look at how I'm putting his image back. Okay now let me command or control Z once. Now I'm going to option click on the layer mask to see it. Look if I take white paint and I cover up the black on the layer mask with the white paint. Okay when I click Option click on the layer mask to so I can see the image. Do you see how it reveals or shows the image? 
I never damaged or did anything to the image. Now, I'm going to hit the X key again, and I'm just going to make a mess. So now I put black all over his face, see? But I didn't put it on his image, I put it on the layer mask of the image. Now to fill with the background color, I have the layer mask selected. So if I go Command Delete to cover over the black on the layer mask, it'll fill. See the, the background tab or icon here is called the background color. So if I go Command Delete, it'll fill it back up with white. White reveals. Now, 100% of white or 100% of black does 100% of the reveal or the show. Command Z back. Let me go to 50% and put the flow of the paint on 50%. Now look at how you can see it's a lot less, not a whole bunch less. I'm going to Command Z and then Option Command Z or Alt Command Z twice. So you go Option Command, sorry, you go Command Z or, or Control Z for one undo. And then you add Option or Alt to keep on going on the undos. But let me put this down to 5%. So only 5% black or white is coming out of this. Look at how if I take 5%, I'm just putting a little bit of paint on the layer mask. I'll Option click on it. See how there's just a little bit of paint on the layer mask? I'm going to Option click on it again, and I'm going to fill it up by going Command delete to fill up the layer mask with white. Now I want to remove the layer mask and delete it off of there because this was just going to be my original image and I'm turning it off. Now let's get right to the assignment. So I'm going to click on the original image. Listen to my words. Never de detract or um, cause damage to any original layer that a client gives you. So I'm hitting Command S while I talk. So always duplicate it but always save as on the file to make a second one. Now let's get right into the nose. So I'm going to click on the nose layer. Now there's a neat thing in Photoshop which is called, if I hit the J key for the healing brush, in the tool palette here, this icon right there is the healing brush. If you hold it down, you can see that it's called the spot healing brush. So we're going to use and hit the J key when we want, and then we're going to switch to the clone tool. Now I want to explain a couple of things very quickly. Up on the top, these three buttons say Content Aware, Create Texture, or Proximity Match. Content Aware means that if I do, and let me zoom in, if I do one, I'm zooming way in and I'm toggling my, my brackets to make the brush smaller. Now, if I have Content Aware, that means one click on the healing brush. The healing brush will immediately look all around it, see what is the average tone, and it'll duplicate it right then. So the first thing it does is give you a little black indicator of what's it gonna of what it is going to do or the area it's going to work in. Then instantly it takes away that. And what we're doing is we're painting and fixing on a layer above the original because look up here. I clicked sample all layers. So on your machine before you start with the healing brush, please click Sample all layers. Now write that down, and every time you do a good thing, command S to save. Now I'm going to keep on clicking and keep on clicking and keep on clicking. And I'm going to click and click and click and click until I have a lot of the really bad pores gone. So you can see here that it's up to you. You be the judge, okay? You anticipate what the client says. Do you think the client would like all these little whiteheads on there? I don't think so, or however you want to talk about them. I think that you should toggle the brush smaller, and let me right hand click on the brush first and show you something. See the brush down here? If I right hand click, I'm actually making the hardness not all the way to 100, but definitely not real soft all the way to zero. And please always leave your brush spacing. Please write this down. Always leave your brush spacing, I'll explain it later, at 25%. Okay, please don't ever change 25%. Say that out loud to yourself right now. Say, what should the brush spacing be? 25%. Okay, so I'm going to hit the return key or the enter key to accept that. Now I'm going to make this smaller because I can obviously target these little pores and these little whitey things here on his face um, kind of quick. Now um, it's up to you if you go too far with something, just Command Z back. Uh, and then Option or Alt Command Z back until you're happy with where you are. Now, 
I'm going to pretend that I've done all the work on his face and his nose. Okay, so all those little spots on his nose. And I'll even say, um, you know what, I'm sorry. I'm going to take the nose and I'm going to say nose underscore um, mouth area. Because I can make anything on this um, layer that I want. Okay, so let's zoom in and let's make it larger. I don't want this to take a lot of time because I know you're excited to get into this. But you can see just how miraculous this entire thing works. Look at how I can go in here and take away all the stuff. Now that almost made him look like it had a blemish on it. Okay, right there. I don't like it, so I'm going to Command Z it back. I'm going to zoom in a little closer and make the brush a little smaller. And I'm going to take this out gent gentler. Now, I think I should go a little softer with the brush. So instead of having a hard edge, now I have a soft edge. Do you see that? See how nicer the soft edge is? So don't be all the way hard. My, my advice to you is go to about 50 to 60 percent. Somewhere in the 50 percent 50 to 60 percent mark is where you should be. Now take away any spot you want. Now that's not a very nice spot right there. So let me get real close and totally take that away. And now let's go real close here and look at how nice that was. Now this is how I could take away his little spot here. See how I did that? And this should actually be cleaned up here. Now we're going to have to do this with a clone stamp right here. So what I want to do Probably not at the moment, but well, maybe I can. The other tool than the healing brush is the S key, which is the clone stamp. Now, the clone stamp looks the same way, okay? It acts the same way. Make sure that you're sampling all layers with the clone stamp. And look at how my flow is only on 5% with the clone stamp. I'm going to put it at 100%. So... I'm going to want the clone stamp to be, again, between 30, 40, 50, 60 percent on the middle of it. Now, I'm going to toggle the brush real small. Now, I want you to see what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab this red. See where I'm clicking with the Option key right here or the Alt key? I'm clicking that red. Now, as soon as I move that, and notice if I move to the lower right that this is going to move in this direction. But if I sample this area and move over to here, do you see how the sample moves with me? See how nice that was? So it samples that area and then it moves with me. Now you've got to be careful that you don't go too far because you just got to have a little artist license. Now let's take this area right here and let's move up with it. And let's just gently replace this whole thing here. And then I'm going to take this and just round off his little tooth right like that. Now, I'm going to make this go to a little bit softer flow. Not 100%, but about 30%. Now, why did I do that? I'm going to make the brush a little bigger like this. Look what I'm sampling here. See how it's softer in this area? Well, I'm going to work that softer all the way up the mouth here. And see how now the transition between this area and that area is a lot softer. Now, I made this too light here. So let's go back and sample this darker area, and actually this darker area, and let's resample that and cover it up. Now, look at how nice I made that. Let me show you what that looked like. There's what it looked like. There's what I have. So in the clone stamp, and see how his tooth is not really good here? Let's get it really small. Let's sample this color right here, and now let's go in here and let's clean up the tooth. Do you see how the little sampler thing over here is working with me when I push the mouse down? That's by, oh, well, i got to fix that area right there, so I'm going to resample. Resampling is option clicking where you want. Take your time and get good at this. Now let's go get the spit out of here. Watch how I can sample this area right here, and now I can just paint and get the spit out of here. I'll sample a little farther to the right. So I'm option clicking here, and now I'm just going to click the mouse and move it. So look at how now I'm replacing. Let's sample way up here, and now come right through here, and look at how I can fix this whole little thing right here. And let go of the mouse every little bit so it accepts what you've done. Now let me click back here, and let's now round this tooth off. Whoops. Let's click here and round this off and make this nice and dark. And now when I get back on that, look how nice that looks. There's no yucky there. Now we'll fix the yellow of the teeth in a minute, and I'm going to Command S to save the file. Now this is very cool. Let's take one and call this, this is his, I'm circling here, I'm sorry. You can hardly see what I'm talking about, but this, you can't really see. Let me hit the V key. See this I over here that I'm hitting? That's the V key so you can see this tool. This is his 
um, right eye. So I'm going to call this his right eye area, and then I'm going to call the one above it his left eye area. Now I'm going to click to the right eye area, and I'm going to go back to the J key, and I'm going to make the brush a lot bigger. Now this is very cool. I want you to see how I'm going to be ridiculous in my ability or my nature to take away these wrinkles, because this is the secret of good Photoshop work. I'm going to take that wrinkle completely away. Now I have to Z back, because it didn't do it well. I have my brushes too big and I'm on too soft of a brush. So I have to go to a harder brush. See how I right hand click to make this work. Now I'm going to go to a smaller brush and I'm going to surround that wrinkle just like this. Now I'll surround that wrinkle. Now I'll surround this wrinkle. I'll surround this wrinkle. I'll surround this area, this area, and I'll keep on going. Now this is going to look stupid, but I don't care. This is what I want you to do. I'm going to take away this whole wrinkle here all gone. Now, let's go here and underneath his eye, let's take this whole area away. Now, this whole wrinkle, see it right here, all the way down his nose, take it all away. Okay, now, let's do the left eye, which is on this side. So let's go take this wrinkle away, good. Let's make the brush smaller. This is the healing brush. Don't, don't worry about this, please. Don't worry about this. Let's go now take the whole wrinkle around here away. Whoops, I made the brush too big. So I command Z back. I have to get a little um, shorter with my strokes. Okay, that's it, a little bit more. Okay, now this is really prominent here. So watch how easy I make this look. Now look at how I've taken him all the way here. He actually looks ridiculous, okay? He looks like somebody took him. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing at myself. This is pretty cool. Now, here it is with the wrinkles, without the wrinkles, with the wrinkles, without the wrinkles. Now watch what happens when I simply simply take the opacity of this layer and put it on 50% or on we're going to go all the way down to about 30%. Now let me take the opacity of this layer to 30% and I may have to adjust this in a second because I want you to see something now. Now where it looked really bad here's the original look at how dark it looks around his eyes let me zoom in with the option middle mouse button okay and let me move the tool palette over now look this was the original this is what I have I'm sorry this is the original this is what I've knocked it back to now if I want this eye which is his left eye area to go back a little bit more I'm not going to just adjust the opacity. I mean, gosh, I could take it all away or make it all come back. I like it at 30% or even I'll even go to 40%. Do you remember the layer mask thing? Okay, what I want to do is I want to leave this at 30, maybe even 20% on both. So I'm going to go to 20% opacity on both of these. And I'll explain later why there is a fill and an opacity, but please don't pay attention to that. So, without anything selected, please watch. Add a layer mask to the left eye area. I'm gonna to click to the right eye area. Add a layer mask to the right eye area. Now let's concentrate just on this one that I'm working on here, see? Okay, now what I wanna do is cover up a little bit more of this wrinkle here. Let me show you what the original was like. I don't think, I like, first of all, I like how I've minimized the one around his nose and his eyelid. See, look, see how nice it is now? But I want to bring back, I want to take this one away a little bit more. So what do I need to take away something? Okay, so um, now you got to think what you're doing here. This layer that I'm going to paint on, which is the left eye, I'm going to click to it. I have actually taken away all the wrinkles on the left eye area. So in order for me to see through to the bottom layer, I have to actually take away some of my improvement. See what I'm saying? Okay, or if I wanted to even show more of my improvement, I have to actually paint um, a little bit of black on it so I can show more or less of my improvement. So let's just test that whole theory. Okay, so I'm going to take B for the paintbrush. I'm going to make it smaller. I'm going to change the flow of the paintbrush to 5%. So if I'm painting in black or if I'm painting in white, it's only coming out 5%. So again, I want you to see 
how this is with no left eye area on, this is with the left eye area on. So if I paint black on here, do you see how I'm actually putting, um, whoops, I can't believe I did that. I was actually painting black on the image because over here, I'm actually glad I did that. In the layer, you can have the layer mask selected, which I just clicked on, or the layer. I don't want to paint black on the layer. I want to paint black on the layer mask. So now, here is black on the layer mask, and let me hit the X key and paint white on the layer mask. Now, um, what I should do is make this come back up to 100%. Now, I want to have control over how much you see or don't see of this, okay? But I'll put it back on 30% in a minute. Now, watch what happens. When I take and I paint, I did it again, I have to click to the layer mask. And you, you, you will make that mistake all the time. If I paint black on the layer mask, which I'm not doing, I'm painting white on it, I have to hit the X key. So here is black on the layer mask. What is it doing? It's letting me cut through my improvements, my covering up with the healing brush. I'm cutting through it. I'm seeing to the layer below it. Okay, so if I turn off the layer below it, do you see how I'm actually cutting it away? Now look at how harsh this improvement was here. I'll turn on the background layer. I want to see some of that. So what I'm doing is I'm mellowing it out. Now look at how I've actually taken the eye, the top of the eyelid out. I actually want to see it, but not as harsh as it was. So really good retouchers will eliminate something entirely. And because it's not supposed to be across the board perfect, you as an artist could um, have a top image where you can see what you've taken out. I have to replace some of this over here. Okay, I have to replace some of this over here. So now there's this nicely replaced. Let me hit the X key now and put in a little bit more of the wrinkles here. Okay, and now let me let me um, turn on this. Okay, I want to see a little bit more of this wrinkle right here. So I'll X key it back in. There it's coming back in. And I'm only putting the flow at 5%. So I have to work the brush kind of a lot to make it work. Now look at how nice this looks. Look at how his face looks just about natural and normal on that side. Now let's take the right eye area and put it up to 100%. Now let's use the original image and look at what it was like. Okay, I'm going to paint on the layer mask for the right eye area. Again, this is the right eye area. I want to reduce the amount of fix-up I did on it. So I'm going to um, turn, turn on the bottom layer and now I'm going to paint with a bigger brush at 5% and I'm going to see a little bit of this wrinkle. I want to see a little bit more of the bottom wrinkle coming through, but just not as much. Now let me turn this on and see where I need it. Okay, I want to see just a little bit of this wrinkle here. Oh, that's nice. Just a little bit. I want to see a little bit of these wrinkles. Let me turn on the top image again. Um, I could see a little bit more of that. And then if you think you went too far, just hit your X key. And instead of painting in black, you'd be painting in white. Now, look at how nice that looks. Look at how nice that whole area looks. Not so bad, okay? Now, Command S to save the file. Now, what I want to do is I want to smooth out his face, okay? So I'm going to call this um, the white. I'm going to take away the white shines. So these are going to be the white shines first. And then the one above it, layer 5, is going to be for the cheek area. And you have to have patience because at first it's not going to look great. Now let me take the white shine. What we're going to do is we're going to take the S key. Do you remember what the S key is? It's the clone stamp. And I'm going to toggle the brush bigger with my bracket. Now, what I really also want to do is I forgot to take out his forehead wrinkles. So I should put a new layer up there. And since I'm on it right now, I'm going to take away all his forehead wrinkles. Because I want to do that before I take away... Um, any of the white shine. So I'm on the forehead wrinkles, I take the J key, I right hand click and I'm just about right and I'm going to now remove that wrinkle, I'm going to remove this wrinkle, I'm going to remove this one entirely, I'm removing this one and this one. I'll remove this big popping vein right here, this one right there, I'll remove that mole right there, I'll remove that mole, that little spot, that wrinkle. Now obviously I've taken everything away. This is what it should look like. This is what I have it looking like. So what I'm going to do is just remove some of the opacity from that and let his wrinkles come back about 50%. This is what they were 
this is what I'm having them look like. Now, I can go to the white shine area. I want to put the forehead wrinkles below the white shine area. So when I fix the white shine, the wrinkles are going to be below it. Now, how do I do that? I take the C key. I move in. I'm sorry, not the C key, the S key. I was hoping you corrected me there. And I'm going to put it at 30%. I'm going to move 30% down to about 15%. And I'm going to make sure that I'm almost all the way soft with it. Now, I'm going to sample this. Look, at, I'm sampling this color. And I'm going to move my brush over this white shine. And I'm sampling this texture and repainting it over here. Now let me sample this texture right there. Let me move this texture right over there. Now look at how I've actually reduced the amount of wrinkles. Now let's take away some of this hair from the middle of his forehead. Whoops, too much. Let's go grab a lighter tone. Look at him, option clicking right there. And now I'm going to replace that and take away some of his hair right there. And now I think that that looks a lot better right there. I'll lighten up on that tone just a little bit by grabbing this tone. There, now I'm lightening up. That looks really good. And now let's take away this on his nose. Let's grab this nose color and take that away. Okay, let's go to his nose here and let's reduce this white shine on his nose. Not such a big brush. Let's go grab this tone and let's go over here and just kind of soften the, the intensity of that white shine. Just make it softer. Now if I wanted to, I could actually go in and make a new layer for some of these pores here or go down to that little nose area and I could um, take the J key I know I'm saying J and S a lot but let's go down to the J key and let's sample this and let's have this gone so let me remove all of these here all of these top layers let's go down to the nose and mouth area and now let's sample this and let's have some of these new pores gone. So I turned off all the other layers. So some of this stuff I could actually just remove so that when I put the other layers back on, you see what I'm saying? That they're not going to show up as harsh. Now let's put um, all the other layers by dragging and putting them back on and hitting Command S to save the file. Now look at how I took the whole curse of that off. Now I still should go over here and get rid of these. Okay, now I probably should have the brush be a little bit softer. My brush size is pretty good, don't you think? And I'm coming in here and doing that. Now, your job, and I'll bring up the one that I finished, because I could spend a lot of time on this, but I don't have a whole lot of time on this um, tutorial movie. Okay, so you have to tell me how you like it. That's not supposed to be there. That does not look good. So let me just click over here, and let's just now remove some of this. Now I might have to go in here with a, um, that looks actually really good. Command S to save the file. Okay, because I want to get to a few things. I'm going to hit the S key for the chin area, but I'm going to put the chin, in fact, I'll name this cheek and chin area, underscore chin. Now, this is delicate, okay? I want to take some of this tone and cover up that tone. So I hit the, the S key for clone stamp. I make it somewhat bigger. I go grab this tone right here and look at how I'm just lightly at 5, uh, it's at 15%. I'm paint, whoops, let me command Z back. Let me grab this. I'm painting over this orange tone. Let me um, command Z back again because I didn't like that. Let's go grab this tone right there. Now, let me just lighten up by clicking. Look at how nicely that's taking texture and lightening up that whole chin area. Now this is what the chin, I'll even get a little bit in here. Oh, that looks really nice. Now, this is what his chin did look like. This is what I've done, and I've softened it, okay? Now, there's so much to work on on his face. So you can see you've got a whole lot to, to clean up, okay? We really should go to the C key, and since I'm still on the cheek area, I'm sorry, I'm at the J key or the S key, I'm gonna go to the J key, and I'm going to make it bigger, and I'm going to get rid of this, 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 and let's go here and back to here. Now I'm going to make it be, I'm going to, I need a little help in this area right here. I need a little help. So I'm going to go up a little higher. There, that looked good. Smaller brush. Let's get rid of this spot and that spot. And that looks pretty good. I'll get rid of that one. 
I'll get rid of this one, this one, this one. Let's get rid of this one, this one, this one. See, I could just keep on going here. Don't get crazy on me, but make yours right. Okay, now let's go to the S key and soften his cheeks. Okay, so now let's go um, make the brush somewhat bigger. Let's grab this tone and look at how I can just paint right over. And when I say paint, I'm painting with the texture of his face. And I'm just softening, just by pulling the mouse a little bit around and clicking, I'm taking all that greasy look off of his cheek. Okay, that's kind of nice. Now, let's move over to here. Let's take away all of this. Let's try to find a nice tone. We might even borrow the tone from over here. So I'll grab this tone over on his other cheek, and I'll start softening this cheek. Okay, don't go too far with it. Let's get a little bit more of that red in there. Let's soften this out just a little bit right there. That looks good. Don't go too far with it. And now I'm just clicking. I'm not clicking and dragging. So you see i got to fix up all these pores on his nose, which I didn't do. That's going to be up to you to do some of that. Okay, now here is what his face was like. So you can see that I have really softened some of the damage on his face. And I did lose this. See how I need to get that wrinkle back in right here? See this right there that I'm pointing to? I lost that too much. So let's figure out what layer that's on. Okay, it's on this layer. So let's click to the layer mask. Let's hit the B key. Make sure our brush is only at 5 or 10 percent flow because I don't want to put too much black on it and let's go back in make the brush a little bigger and let's just click and bring back some of that so I'm adding more black to the layer mask which cuts a hole in my improvement letting me see through to the bottom layer Do you see how I said that it's exactly how I want you to think it so let's go to the teeth I'm going to show you exactly what to do on the teeth layer Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to grab, um, I'm going to show you what I did on the other one. So let me go to Open Recent, and go to Face 1. Okay, so what I did to do the teeth was I actually put a hue and saturation adjustment layer on the top of my file. Now, I want you to look over here. It adjusted everything to black and white. Now what I had to do was to fill a layer mask up with black so that the only white black and white part of him that showed up was where his teeth were. Follow what I'm saying? Now there's a way to actually clip this adjustment layer to one of these layers, but I don't want to talk about it right now. I want to actually have this black and white layer affect all the layers below it. I'll tell you how to do it. If you Alt or Option click to between the layers, you can actually um, clip an adjustment layer to a layer below it. Therefore, it will only affect the layer below it and not the other layers. But in this case, I don't want to clip it. So let's go back to the one that we're working on. Let's click to the top layer and add an adjustment layer of hue and saturation. Now let's take the hue and saturation properties window and desaturate it entirely. Okay, that's kind of neat. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill the whole thing up with black. What's that going to do? Well, that's going to eliminate the saturation. Okay, so you'll see color again. What I want to then do is paint white on the layer mask to only show where his teeth were. You follow what I'm saying? So I'm going to zoom in. So I'm going to take this and fill it all up with black. Look at how the foreground color is black. So I go Option Delete. Okay, now there's no more hue and saturation that is allowed to be seen. So I take the B key, make it go to about a middle hardness. Not all the way soft, not all the way hard. Okay, but I'm going to up the flow from about 10 to 20 percent because I want to really paint inside of these teeth. Now I'm not painting inside of the teeth. I need to switch this color to what? Yes, I have the X key and I switch it to white. So what I am doing is I am painting, look what I'm doing, I am painting white on the layer mask which is cutting a hole where I just painted. Now how do I know it? If I option click on here, do you see how I just put white on the layer mask? 
it allows me to see the hue and saturation because black eliminates the hue and saturation, white reveals it. So I just Alt or Option clicked on it again. So what you have to do is go around all of the, your teeth and just paint. Now don't have it on a 5% flow, it'll take you forever. And you don't have to worry about making a mistake. I'll make a mistake right now, okay? I'll go way, I'm going to do it in two seconds. I'm going to go way up in here. Whoops, I made a bad mistake. Oh my gosh. Well, all I have to do is hit the X key and paint black back on top of the layer mask to let me cut a hole back into the hue and saturation black to white. So what I'm saying is don't worry about a mistake. I'm going to now re-hit the X key so I can go in and fix this whole thing now. Now I'm only going to do these three teeth or four teeth, you're going to do the rest. Now look at how I can even take out the yellow that's around the edge. Now, I'll do, I'll really fill these in quickly. I'll make the brush nice and big. So let's fill in this one, da 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 da. I'm even gonna go way too big. So I'm gonna put in a lot of, look, at, I'm just, I'm being very messy, see? Very messy, la da 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 da. Very messy, who cares? I'm just flooding it in there. Now, I'll get more refined. How do I get more refined? It's a lot easier to put it back so let's hit the X key and paint black right through here. See how fast that was? Black right through here. Let's now round this tooth off where it was supposed to be rounded off before there. Let's come underneath here. Let's come over here, whoops, and move this back over with the space bar. And now let's reinstate the gum area back to nice and pink. Let's come with the gum area back to nice and pink. Now if I go too far with the nice and pink, like, oh darn, I went too far there. Just take the X key and exit back and look at how now you have white teeth, okay? Don't worry about the gray. Now, what I want to do is when you're all finished, I want to go back to my first file, okay? Because I don't want to take the time to do this. I just want to go back to the first file that I already finished. And I'm going to turn back on. I'm turning off the original layer. Now, I added... I added... A, um, a way that um, I turned the entire file into black and white. Okay, so I'm going to temporarily, I'm going to disable the layer mask. So do you see how now the whole file is black and is just because I added another hue and saturation to everything. So what I did was I grouped all of these layers together. Now I'll go back to the original file and I'll show you what I did. So let's go back to the one you and me are working on. Let's click all of the ones by shift clicking all of these and put them into a group. Okay, so let's go right hand click and group from layers. Let's just leave it at group one. And then what we're going to do, I'll go back to this file and show you the other one, is we're going to just add two um, layers. One is going to be a layer mask that allows for us to actually kind of highlight his area. Okay, see how I did that? With a big hole of black in the middle, but we'll do it at one time uh, together, you, you and me. So let's go now do the hue and saturation. So let's go back to your file. Let's just put another adjustment layer of hue and saturation on the whole thing. Now what I want to do is fill it with black. So let's go Command Delete and fill it with black. And now, uh, I'm sorry, um, I forgot to take out the hue and saturation. So let's take now and um, desaturate it all the way to nothing. Now what I want to do is I want to paint. I didn't mean hit it with Command Delete, okay? I want to take a huge paintbrush, really big. And I'm going to put this up at like ridiculous amount of like 100%. Okay, now watch what happens when I paint his face in. Whoops, I got to hit the X key. Watch what happens when I paint his face back over the image. So I toggle the brush big and small. I don't try to get really perfect with it yet. I just kind of go around the edges, around his edge, around his edge by here. I don't care if I mess up the background a little bit. So now let's fill him up with black again. You can refine the edge area. Okay, now so now I've done this at 100%. Let's go around his shirt. Let me bring this up. Let's go around his shirt here and around his shirt here. And then I'll fill up the whole thing with a much bigger. I don't care if I miss a little bit. Don't try to be too perfect right off the bat. 
and then we're going to alt or option click on the layer mask so we can make sure the whole thing is filled in with black like did we miss any spots okay so let's go option click on it and say whoops look what all we missed so now let's fill all this in and when we do let's hit command s to save now this edge isn't very pretty now what do i have to do make the brush smaller hit the x key and paint white near his edge so let's zoom in that's middle mouse button zooming with the option key or alt key held down now let's option click back on the layer mask to so we can see the image now look at how nice this is going to be if i take this brush and i paint white back in right next to his ear i now have the edge very nice now this isn't supposed to be in full color so let's just move down and around it there did that take very long the answer is no Let's go over to the other side and let's see if, oh, there's a little bit of an edge here that we needed to use. And I think I'm pretty good. Actually, I didn't go far enough on his head here. So let's hit the X key and just move it out just a little bit farther. Make sure your brush is not all the way hard. Make sure it's not all the way soft either. Halfway is good. Now, what I want to do, okay, is I want a little, whoops, I missed over here. You probably were yelling at me about that, weren't you? Whoops, I got to Command Z back and hit the X key. So let's now take this away. And I'm painting white back on the layer mask so that it saturates out the background. Now look at how nicer that looks, but it's almost too much, okay? Look at how the color around him takes away from him, but we need some of that color. So instead of having this hue and saturation layer on 100% opacity, let's move it to 50%. Or even, I'm going to put it at 60, a little bit more. Right there, I like that. 68%. Now look at how nice that is. Now, I'm going to hit Command S to save. What we have to do is, his teeth, his teeth look funny like that, but that's okay. I'm going to leave them like that because I have them fixed on the other file and I'll show you what I mean. But let's take and darken the perimeter of his head just a little bit. So all we have to do to do that is take a blank layer, fill the blank layer up with a circle, okay, a big, big circle, and then just vignette it, okay, and I'll show you what I did to do that. So let's go to phase one. So I took... Um, a bunch of black. I just filled up the whole thing with black. Then I added a layer mask and look at what the black does here where I'm circling. The black cuts a hole in the painted black. So you know black eliminates. So what's it going to do? Uh-huh. It's going to reveal the image. And then we're going to make sure the edge is soft. And then this is only on a 20% opacity. So look at how nice that looks. It just darkens the background, but it highlights his face. It's really simple. You just have to think, and you will start thinking like Photoshop. So on this layer, let's just hit Option, Delete, or Alt, Delete, and cover it all up with black. Okay, don't panic. Okay, now what I'm going to do is add a layer mask. Now what I want to do is make a circle in here. So I'm going to hit this marquee tool, which is the M key. I'm going to hold the option key and I'm going to draw a big marquee like this. Now, I'm going to just move it where his face was. I'll show you where his face was. See how I can kind of move it where the face was? I'm going to go to Select, Transform Selection, and I'm going to move it around his face and get it to be about the right shape of his face. Then I'm going to add a 100 pixeled feather to it. Okay, so that's, that's pretty good, a little bit bigger. So let's now hit the return key. Let's add a 100 pixeled feather by going to modify feather. Let's go to 100 pixels. Now, if it's not enough, we'll make it more by Gaussian blurring. Okay, now what I'm going to do is on this layer mask, I'm going to fill it with black, but I want you to see what I'm going to do. So I turned off the top image. So far, the black paint covers them all up, doesn't it? Let's click to the layer mask. Now, what's the quick key if you look over here in the tool palette? To fill this up with white, I'm sorry, with black in this here is Command-Delete. So let's hit Command-Delete. Now, what did Command-Delete do? I used black on a layer mask to cut through the black on this layer which reveals anything below. So I just want you to let that soak in. 
I know it's hard for you to grasp. Okay, now let's command D to deselect. And I don't like that this wasn't blurred enough. So let's go in and go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Oh, it's way on my other screen, so I'm going to move it over. And let's go to another like 150 pixels. And you can see what, the, what it did. Here's the preview of it, and now here's what it did. I love that. Now let's take that away or say OK, I'm meant to say OK. And then we take the entire layer down to about, in this case, in my other one was like 25% opacity, but I like this one at 40% opacity. Yeah, now look how nice that looks. Look how it really zeroes in. So if this were an ad, and it were for like Humana or Blue Cross Blue Shield or it were for like a worker in an office for a computer. Look at how nice it looks compared to this. Just way too bright, way too much. Now, let me go to my image that I'm finished so you can see the actual finished one that I have taken everything out. His teeth are beautiful. And see, I told you that was at 20%. Let me put this one up to 40%. Actually, I like the other one at 40%, but this one I think I'm going to leave in the mid-20s. And that's it. That's what you have to do. Here is the original file, which you can leave this layer on yours too, okay, as a top layer, so I can just turn it off and on. Give me the .psd file. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to your Dropbox account, or you're going to... Um, and I would prefer you to do that because I'll show you the file. Let me um, let me hit the F key. I'll show you the amount of megabytes this is. This face number one is 81.6 megabytes. I kind of wouldn't want you to email that to me. All right, I really don't even want you to use this to go back to your module, the Canvas portal. I don't want you to go back to here to go to, let me see if I can find it fast to click on the photographic retouching and then submit it to me. You will have a submit button. What I think you should do is you should log into your Dropbox account, okay? And in your Dropbox account, I think you should go to um, give me the file. Now, I'm not going to log into Dropbox, although there is my folder for Dropbox right there. And you can see I have a 1320 folder. What I've asked you to do is to make your 1320 folder and share it with sorialb at macomb.edu. So all you basically, if this were your 1320 folder, go to Dropbox, pick up your file like I'm doing, drop it in your 1320 folder. It'll say, who do you want to share it with? And share it with me. So I hope you like this one. Now what I really want you to do, and let's go back to Photoshop so at least it's on the screen so you can see it. Okay, and what I want you to do, I'll put the nice one on the screen. Oh, it is the nice one. Um, I just have the top layer on. You can leave your top layer off for me, okay? What I would like you to do is to finish one, and if you have time, please, right hand click on your second one go find a really good second one and show me what you can do i had these as my second ones again i think that this lady i'll open them both up in photoshop and then i'll stop the file okay and let's go here and you can see that i had that woman let me close her very classic face and this guy who needs a lot of help his teeth are a little long over here it looks like dracula actually so let's um just end this file and go on to the next assignment or the extra credit part of this assignment. Thank you.